To better understand the story of the Old Hunters, it's better to take a look at some of the most prominent themes of the DLC. The one that's really hammered in starts with Simon, the Harrowed Hunter, a sane hunter for the church. You sense a secret within the nightmare and cannot bear to leave it be. But beware, secrets are secrets for a reason, and some do not wish to see them uncovered. Especially when the secrets are particularly unseemly. But as you progress, Simon joins your side in the quest to unearth the secrets he already knows. Do you know why the hunters are drawn to this nightmare? Because it sprouted from their very misdeeds. Things that some would rather keep secret. A pitiful tale of petty arrogance, really. High time someone exposed the whole charade. Even Brador, locked in his lonely cell, warns you that secrets should be left alone, hence why he invades you time and time again as you draw closer to the real secret. Bear in mind, some places are better left untouched, and some secrets are better left alone. By persisting to uncover said secrets, you are bound to uncover a truth from the sins of the Healing Church's founders, those sins of which they would rather remain in obscurity. The first secret you uncover is how unsightly the choir's research hall's experiments were. Lady Maria, please take my hand. Please help me. Don't let me drown. Within the clock tower, an area in which you do not see in reality, were terrible and inhumane experiments. Although what happens within those walls is not the real secret in the nightmare as Simon alludes. Not a pretty sight, is it? The true face of the blood-worshipping, beast-purging, healing church. But that's not all. You seek the secrets held by the nightmare, do you not? Then here's what you must do. Climb the astral clock tower and kill Maria. She hides the real secret. When you go to kill Maria, examine Lady Maria's dialogue. A corpse should be left well alone. When she's saying a corpse should be left well alone, she doesn't mean that in a literal sense as much as she does in the sense that the secret should remain dead, like a corpse. This is made even more clear as she continues her train of thought on how the secrets beckon you sweetly. She is persistent to put you to death to protect the real secret, and that real secret is contained within the cursed town of Fishing Hamlet. Later, Simon spills the beans as he spills his blood, having been assassinated by Berdor for helping you unearth the secrets to the town. Please. I need you to do something. This village is the true secret. Testament to the old sins. It feeds this hunter's nightmare. Please, bring to an end the horror. So our forefathers sin. We hunters cannot bear their weight forever. It isn't fair. Brador is a healing church assassin who invades you as you grow closer to what the church is trying to hide. Unending death awaits those who pry into the unknown. Also, the many hunters who have tried to uncover the secrets are placed in cells to dwindle away. So what is the real secret? The secret has everything to do with Kaz and the orphan of Kaz who is posthumously born at the very instant you arrive. It is evident in the fact that once you slay the orphan of Kaz, you get a nightmare slain message, he is then returned to the ocean, and the unsettling sun disappears from all areas of the game. Is he crying at the death of his mother, or at the nightmare he was born into? The answer is found in the second, more subtle theme of the DLC. Take a look at the very first cutscene you see. It's apparent the voiceover is Lady Maria, and she says, Curse the fiends and their children. And their children forever true. Well, what are fiends? At first, I interpreted it as she was talking about the beasts or even the kin, when really she is mirroring what the accursed fisherman of Fishing Hamlet is saying. Blasphemous, blood, blasphemous, murderous, blood crazed fiends. Atonement for the wretches by the wrath of Mother Goss. Mercy for the poor innocent child. Mercy. Please. 
Fiends are actually the first Bergenworth hunters, and that is who Lady Maria is referring to in the intro. The first Bergenworth hunters and their children and their children's children are cursed. Lay the curse of blood upon them and their children and their children's children forevermore. Curse the fiends, their children too. Gotta love that little misleading twist as they tried to make you think Maria was talking about the beasts when it was indeed the hunters all along. We know hunters are cursed to the nightmare when drunk with blood, destined to wander forever, engaged in an endless hunt. It is a fate no hunter can escape. This is the curse Maria is talking about. But why are they cursed? First, we must look into what led to Kaz's demise. We know Kaz was a major, instrumental part of the choir's religion from Mikolash, and that Kaz was responsible for Rom's ascension. Ah, Kaz. Or some say Cosm. Do you hear our prayers, as you once did for the vacuous Rome? Grant us eyes, grant us eyes, grant eyes on our brains to cleanse our beastly idiocy. The grand lake of mud, hidden now from sight. That Grand Lake of Mud, could it be Fishing Hamlet? The only thing we have to go on about what led to Kaz's demise is in the item description for the Kaz Parasite, and it's that the carcass of Kaz had washed up on shore. So, nothing specific. This is where the game wants you to take a step back and think a little. They don't want to flat out tell you the answer. They want you to question, what are the sins of the hunter's forefathers? Why is the village of Fishing Hamlet the real secret? Worse than what I just saw in the research hall. Why are the hunters cursed to an inescapable nightmare when drunk with blood? What was it that the first hunters did that was terrible enough to warrant a curse. And when you start piecing together all the logical conclusions, only one thing fits, and that one thing is rotting on the coast of Fishing Hamlet. Could it be that the Healing Church's first hunters slaughtered Kaz out of their greed to learn more about how to ascend? I think so. The murder of Kaz and those sins of the forefathers is the secret and what created this nightmare. Now, as a result of a curse, when hunters become so drunk with the hunt and slay everything they see in search of answers, they are doomed to this nightmare as punishment. It is a fate that no hunter can escape. The accursed fisherman also brings up the wretches, who are the children of Kaz, who because of the first hunter's misdeeds, are plunged into a nightmare and lifetime of misery. Each wretched birth will plunge each child into a lifetime of misery. So, not only are the sins of the forefathers cursing many generations of hunters, but it is inadvertently cursing the children of Kaz as well. These curses is the second, more subtle, yet major theme of the DLC. So, oh little orphan, why is it you cry? Do you cry at the nightmare you were born into most of all? Well, he's looking directly at the sun, a symbol of the nightmare. I think so. This entire nightmare exists as a testament to the butchering of the cause great one and a curse to hunters who lose their minds in the rush of the hunt. In a way, your desperate search for answers mirrors exactly what caused the first hunters to sin. As if the spirit of Bergenworth lives on within you. Which is exactly why it is so relentlessly protected. Just as Kaz kept her secrets from the first hunters, and just as Rom kept her secrets from Master Willem, the first hunters, including Ludwig and Maria, are trying to keep their shameful secrets from you. And when you slay the orphan of Kaz in the final cinematic, it flat out says the curse is still there. A bottomless curse. Just going in and killing Kaz's bastard child is not going to lift a curse. But you did free the young Great One from the nightmare. Just as when you killed Mikolash in the Nightmare of Mensis, he says, And in the ending part of the game, Garman says, You will die, forget the dream, and awake under the morning sun. And this happens. When killed in a dream or a nightmare, you awaken in reality and forget everything, and they have made that more clear than anything else in the game. By killing the Orphan of Kaz, you lifted the shackles of the curse from him and allowed him to return to slumber in the sea, in reality. Hence why the foreboding sun disappears after you finish off Kaz's child. So the first theme of the DLC we examine is there is a big secret in the Hunter's Nightmare. The second theme we went over in great extent is that secret. 
Hunters are cursed because of what the first hunters did in the past, and because of that curse, it is affecting the children of Kaz by being birthed into the nightmare. And that is the story I feel the DLC is trying to tell us in the most vague way. Of course, it's from software's beaten rhythm to make a DLC notoriously difficult to access, understand, or even finish. I am holding to this theory, and it is only a theory as there is no evidence to corroborate that Kaz was killed by the first hunters, just inference. But it just makes so much sense. I will be talking in more detail about the characters we meet in the DLC later, so please subscribe and or become a patron. I'd love to thank my current patrons as well. They are awesome and helping me stay afloat. Also, check out some of my other Bloodborne lore videos that are getting overlooked.